This is my favorite headlamp. It's really great, but pretty heavy. Not ideal for like a backpacking trip or something like that. So I wanted to see if an ultralight headlamp could replace this for me. So I went and I bought the lightest headlamps from four different brands. Now what's awesome about these is that all four of them together weigh less than my one army tech. So I ran a bunch of tests to see which of these was the best. Now, if you've seen my bike light comparison video, we're gonna do basically the same thing here. We're going to compare design, features, performance, and price for all of these. Of course, I've got the ultra light headlamps. I'm also gonna compare it to a light, but not exactly ultra light headlamp. And then we're gonna compare it to these heavier aluminum headlamps, which I'm more accustomed to, and see if this ultra light style is really the way to go. Now I picked all these flashlights based both on recommendations from other outdoor enthusiasts and reviewers, as well as just going to the website and looking through their whole catalog and kind of determining what was the most interesting. So I settled on the Nightcore NU25, the Petzl Bindi, the Black Diamond Deploy, and the Black Diamond Flare, which is a bit of a unique one in this group here. Now hopefully I can get this review done before all these bugs eat me. Now before I do the individual comparison of these flashlights, I want to talk about what makes them unique, what makes them ultralight. All of these flashlights are designed first and foremost to weigh as little as possible while still being useful headlamps of course. Now three of these are very similar, directly comparable in use case. This one here, the Black Diamond Flare, was the lightest headlamp that I could find. However, it is a little bit different in its use case and its purpose. So we'll set this aside for now. Now, these three flashlights are made out of plastic and have built-in rechargeable lithium-ion batteries. Normally, I am not a fan of built-in batteries, but that's a big part of what makes these lights so lightweight. We'll see that both the Petzl and the Nightcore, and also the Black Diamond Flare, have the same style of headband where it's basically just a stretchy like shock cord that goes around your head. At first, I thought this was kind of a bad idea, but it proved to be very comfortable in practice and extremely small. Like this is, these are all very, very packable. The only thing I don't like about this style of headband is the fact that it can get tangled pretty easily. Meanwhile, the Black Diamond Deploy has a bit more of a traditional style headband. So this is like an elastic strap, though it's a bit thinner than usual. And then it has these two rubber bits at the top, at the front. In terms of comfort, I found all three of these to be basically the same. They really were so lightweight that I, I genuinely just did not feel them on my head when I was using them. Um, there are design differences, but again, comfort wise, it's negligible because they're so minimal. The Deploy has kind of an interesting design. You can see it has these two rubber wings on the side. I actually found this one to be the least comfortable of the bunch. There's like a, a soft foam pad on the backside, but I found that between the elastic strap and this kind of wide rubber, I don't know, wing system, it sort of just pressed it into my forehead. So I'm really not a huge fan of this. It also made it a little less packable. But in terms of weight, this is still comparable to the other ones. It's actually just a tiny bit heavier than um, any of these three. Still very lightweight. Let's start with the Nikkor NU25. This is probably the most recommended and probably highest rated online of the bunch. This is a super lightweight headlamp from Nightcore, a popular flashlight brand. This one is stacked with features. So it's got a rotating head mount. It's got an IP66 rated USB-C charging port. And this has two different buttons, which let you cycle between output levels and floodlight, spotlight, and red light. The next one is from the outdoor and climbing brand Petzl. This is a much more simple design at first, but actually has most of the same features. So we have white light, red light, and a micro, this time, USB-C charging port on the bottom. And of the uh, normal flashlights, if you will, this is definitely the lightest and most minimal. And then we have the Black Diamond Deploy, which is really interesting because it's designed to allow you to angle the light without actually physically moving it at all. So both the Nightcore and the Petzl, they have brackets that allow you to physically change the angle of the light. So this one ratchets, and this one is just smooth. Um, this one instead has three LEDs, so one that's just a floodlight, and then one that aims up and one that aims down. I think this is a very interesting system. And then finally, we have this one, the Black Diamond Flare. Now this one, again, is unique amongst the bunch because this is designed intentionally as a sort of backup emergency flashlight. So it's extremely small and minimal, as you can see, and it has this little tilting bracket here. And then this one has a white light and a red light. And the interface is very simple on this one. You just twist it to cycle through the different modes. So speaking of which, let's talk about the interface because 
To me, one of the most important aspects of any flashlight is how easy it is to actually get light out of it. And it's definitely especially important in my opinion when the thing is on your head. So the truth is most of these have a very similar interface. Um, if we look at the Nikkor here, we basically have a power button on the top and then a mode button on the side. So this one is press and hold to turn the light on. And then as you press the button, it will cycle upwards, low, medium, and high. And then if you press this little button here on the side, it will cycle between both channels, floodlight, spotlight, uh, red light, and then back again. And it will have the different modes for each of those different channels. Red light has just uh, low and then blinking. The black diamond is very similar, except again, instead of cycling through white and red, we just cycle through floodlight, flood and up, and flood and down, if you will. So you just press it to turn it on and off. Then if you press and hold, it will smooth ramp between high and low modes. This one actually starts high and then ramps low, which is kind of interesting. Then the Petzl has a single button on the top. If you press it, it turns on. Wait a little bit and press it again, it'll turn off. If you press it in a more shorter interval, it will cycle between low, medium, high, and off. If you press and hold, this will activate the red light. Finally, the flare has the simplest and I think best interface of the bunch. You can see there is this big red ring on the top and then a bunch of markings on the bottom. So you can twist this through the modes off, red, blinking red, low, high, and then uh, SOS with the white light. Honestly, I think all of the interfaces are pretty good. My favorite is the Petzl. I just find it the simplest and most efficient. And it's a big deal to me that this one starts on low. I don't like how the black diamond, you turn it on, it will remember whatever mode you were on. But when you press the button, it will start high and then cycle the lower modes, which in my opinion is just not a great design. I like being able to start low so I don't blind myself after my eyes have been dark adapted. It's sort of similar with the Nightcore. You press and hold to turn it on. Um, you can, if you press and hold the mode button instead of the power button from off, it will jump to red. So that's a pretty nice way to do that, I think. In terms of modes, I do find all of them to be fully featured. I think the Petzl and the Nightcore both, um, they have all of the modes that I want and they're easy enough to access, which is great. The Deploy, again, has a good interface, but I don't really like that it lacks red light. The high and low is interesting but I don't find it especially useful at night. I actually do prefer just having the rotating bracket. So it's a unique feature, but for me personally, it doesn't really do it. In terms of charging, again, both the Deploy and the Nightcore have very similar uh, rubber covered USB-C charging ports. The Deploy has a slightly better cover, in my opinion. The one on the Night Core is, I don't know, it's not super confidence inspiring. It works and it's still IP66 rated, but I definitely like this Deploy one better. The Petzl has a micro USB charging port, which is just exposed, so there's no covering on this one. And for me, that is a huge deal. One, micro USB is just a terrible port. And two, the fact that it's uncovered means water resistance is basically not there on this flashlight, which is a shame because Spoiler alert, this is my favorite design of the bunch. I really like the design of this flashlight, but this port just kills it for me. It's a huge problem. Then of course we have the flare, which again, this one is unique because this is not a built-in rechargeable uh, lithium ion battery. This one instead takes lithium primary button cells. So you screw this thing off of the back and there are two 2032 coin cells in here. Now that makes this one very different in its use case because lithium primaries are really good for long-term storage, which again is what this is designed for as a backup emergency flashlight. And again, with its tiny size and everything, it's great for that. However, because it has lithium primary disposable batteries, which are not super cheap by the way, um, this really is relegated to exclusively backup use in my opinion. I do not want to regularly be changing out these cells. Because ultralight headlamps are often used and favored by runners and athletes, all of these have retroreflective accents that will help you to be seen at night um, by drivers and cars, or I guess someone else with a flashlight. All of these, again, shock cord style uh, headbands have retroreflective accents just all throughout, which work very well for all of these. The black diamond has just reflective accents on the actual black diamond logo. So again, I find this one a little bit less effective in that department, but it still works. Before we talk about performance in terms of sustained output, I wanna talk about the beam quality of these. I definitely prefer my headlamps to be floody, generally speaking. I like a nice wide floodlight. 
because when I'm using a headlamp, mostly what I want to see is stuff up close. You know, if I'm holding something at night, I want to be able to see it clearly. If I want to see something further away, personally, I prefer to just carry an extra flashlight. Even in a scenario where I want an ultralight headlamp, in fact, actually, especially in that scenario, um, because I just need a floodlight, I don't need a whole lot out of it. I would prefer my headlamp be ultralight, I think, and have a heavier flashlight. That's just me, but I do think all of these do a good job with their floodlight. None of them have especially great coloration. They're all kind of cool whites. I don't think any of them are high CRI, but they're all decent. Now, as far as more medium to long distance, the brighter flashlights can still punch out there with more output, but the Nightcore specifically has a spotlight option. And I do find that this actually works quite well. It has a good amount of distance, especially on max output where it's very bright. And what's cool about this one is that you can use both of those at the same time. So you can get floodlight and a good spotlight. So you can see pretty much everything you need to very clearly. Again, the Black Diamond Deploy is interesting because it's got an upwards angled and a downwards angled light. While I find the main floodlight to be quite nice, I don't really see a lot of value in those two different light angles. It's a cool feature. Again, I, it just doesn't really do anything for me. I don't need it. I actually prefer just this angled bracket. Uh, I would have just preferred red light. Speaking of red light, both of these do a great job with red light, though I find the Nightcore's red light to be more powerful, yes, but also just has a slightly better beam pattern, I think. Actually, I really like the red light on this. The red LED on this Petzl is also quite solid. The Flare also has really good red light, in my opinion. The white light, I don't like quite as much. It's a pretty bluish color, the worst coloration out of all of these, which makes sense because they want it to be very high efficiency, I think, because it's just running off these coin cells. It's also quite floody and it has a totally even beam pattern. It doesn't throw very far into the distance at all. This is definitely for very close, close, and it's not even really medium range unless you're using maximum output on this. So again, proving that this is really just a backup emergency style flashlight. And you'll see that most when we get to performance. So this is, again, the dimmest of the bunch at 143 lumens. I wouldn't call that dim, but it's not super bright. All of these are actually quite bright. So the Petzl comes out to 300 lumens on max, which I think is a lot of light. Pretty much all you need for a headlamp, in my opinion. The Nightcore almost doubles that with about 600 lumens on turbo, uh, which is actually really impressive. It does a very good job, very bright. Again. That's, in my opinion, a lot brighter than I ever need a headlamp to be. So I was really happy with that. And then the deploy kind of splits the difference between these two. It is also very bright. So I cannot complain about the output of any of these. They do a great job, in my opinion. In terms of sustained performance on turbo, the maximum output, they're all going to drop. These are plastic headlamps after all. There's no heat seeking. So they're not going to sustain turbo for very long. They're going to drop down, but I did find that all of them did a pretty good job with both sustained output, regulation, and run times. As we can see on the graphs, I actually found the Petzl to have the best regulation. So just the flattest line, it sustains itself with the best. The Nightcore sustains a little bit more light. However, there's like two step downs. So you're not gonna sustain light as consistently on this one. And the Black Diamond, again, pretty comparable to the other two. The flare is not regulated, so it's just going to drop as the batteries die until, until they're dead. So you're not going to get flat output, unfortunately. So yeah, is it extremely lightweight? Yes, but it's not something that you should buy and expect to use regularly. All three of these, I found them to be really great. They were very lightweight, <laughs> and that aspect of them is awesome. They were very easy to pack. I took the Nightcore on a three-day backpacking trip, and I loved this light while I had it. Took up no space in my pack. The weight was negligible. When it was on my head, it was very comfortable. Again, I was literally able to just forget I even had it. I loved how easy it was to use. I loved the red light. I feel the same about the Petzl. I think this is a great light. Again, physically, I actually like the design of this the best. Um, and it's the lightest of these three. However, this exposed port was an issue for me. That alone is something that prevents me from keeping and recommending this light over the Nightcore. Finally, we have the Black Diamond Deploy, which I think is the best built of these. However, I don't like the feature set or the comfort as much as the Nightcore. And really, ultimately, I do think the Nightcore is the best. And it's for all of the features that I've already mentioned. Maybe it's not built as well as these other two, but it definitely outcompetes them in terms of feature set and performance. 
and price. So the Night Core comes in at $37, which for what it's offering, I think is a very good value. The Deploy was $60, which is kind of high, I think. It's not horrible, but uh, at that price, I, I just think the Night Core is way better. And then the Petzl, same. This was $50, which is just too high, in my opinion. The Flare, on the other hand, was actually well-priced. I didn't have any issues with this. But again, it's a type of light that's only for a very specific type of use. So just be aware of that. Here is the last kind of oddball addition to this. This is the Black Diamond Astro 300. This is one of their, I think it's their lightest standard headlamp and it was also very inexpensive. Now this is different from the others in that this does not have a built-in battery. It has just a standard three AAA system or you can use their the BD1500 is what this is called. This is a lithium ion rechargeable cell that comes inside the light. Now, in order to use this battery, you do have to also take with you a small charger, which is a micro USB charger, by the way. That's definitely an issue. But I do like that at least this is a dual fuel light, meaning you can use basically any batteries you want, lithium ion or standard AAAs. So my recommendation, if you want a standard battery, you know, AAA flashlight, something like this with Eneloop AAAs definitely seems to be the way to go. I, I definitely do think the trade-off for an ultralight headlamp is worth it. This weighs like half as much, but is I think just as useful, if not more useful than this. While this is lighter than something like my standard Army Tech flashlight here, I definitely would just go for an ultralight headlamp if you can afford it, because this was like 20 bucks. So what about comparison to these other headlamps I'm more used to using? So these are all right angle, basically aluminum flashlights with headband straps. And the thing is, Something like this, this is the Skill Hunt H150. This is a very good headlamp. And this really isn't that heavy. I mean, this weighs pretty much the same, just a tiny bit more than this Black Diamond Astro. This one comes with a 14500 cell, rechargeable lithium ion, but this is dual fuel. So you can use standard double A's in it as well. It's $50, but then again, this Petzl was $50 and the Black Diamond was a little more than that. So that being said, Ultimately, my opinion on the ultralight headlamps is that I think it is worth shaving the weight. These lights, they're just, it's hard to show in a video, but they really are so much lighter and so much more comfortable and so much more packable. When mostly what I need a headlamp for is just seeing stuff around camp, seeing stuff up close. There's really no competition. This gets everything done, basically, that I would need out of a headlamp, but it does it with way, way less weight. I'm happy to say that I really enjoyed my time testing these ultralight headlamps. I will definitely be keeping and using the Nightcore regularly. It works very, very well for that application, in my opinion, and I highly recommend it. It's a great flashlight. These other lights, I think they're good. I think you'll be happy if you buy them, but I do think the Nightcore is the clear winner here. Those are my conclusions. That's the result of my testing. I hope this video was useful to you. Um, if you enjoyed it, please let me know because I sat here next to a river and got eaten by flies to make it. Of course, I will be putting links to all of these flashlights down in the description below, affiliate links where possible. Thanks for watching and uh, have a nice day.